everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today, I want to have kind of a serious conversation. Um, I want, this is probably going to be one of the most important videos <clears throat> that I've ever done. So I want to make sure that I take my time and really explain and relay the messages that I have been trying to sit with over the last week to try to discern the best way to present and share. Um, as many of you know, I do um, soul readings with people and it is disheartening and disconcerting to me how many people, especially children, um, are struggling right now in the collective all over the world, regardless of background, where they live, how much money they have, what their religious beliefs are or not. Many children are um, suicidal. Many children are really struggling, struggling right now with anxiety, um, deep rooted depression, um, misguidance, misdirection, lack of self-confidence, lack of self-worth, and just tragic, um, tragic views um, on their reality. And I get countless emails from parents all over the world, just up in arms, and uneasy because um, they don't know what to do with their child because they are having suicidal thoughts or they have become completely dissociated um, and just not themselves, uh, kind of just walking around like the shells of what they used to be. Uh, and it's not just children, although children is what my primary focus is a majority of the time. <clears throat> but a lot of the adult clients that I work with are also having a really hard time. There are people in our community that have been um, attacked, psychically attacked um, in a physical sense, you know, poisoned, um, pushed, uh, horrible things happening to people, uh, perceived bad luck, one thing after another, friends going, leaving them, betraying them, um, just financial hardship, uh, struggling to survive, to get by, uh, struggling to find purpose, to keep going, to have a sense of um, motivation in this current climate. And that's what I want to talk about today. Today, um, today I want to talk about the war on our divinity. So there's a very real war occurring right now, and it's less physical and more spiritual than I think probably we've ever seen before, we've ever known about. This really is a war on our divinity, our sovereignty, um, our free will. And as you know, I call them the dark players, the players that um, do not have our best interests at heart, the ones that are kind of pulling the puppet strings of the perceived um, rulers or controllers of our reality, whether it's in politics or the medical industry or the educational industry or just government in general or whatever it may be um, in the movies, the media, uh, there are many narratives being pushed and we are at the height of a very prevalent and important spiritual war on the consciousness of humanity. This is huge. And this is why this is probably one of the most important videos I have ever done, because I really want to preface the significance of what is going on here. There are people in this world that have absolutely no idea what is happening. They are blissfully or maybe arrogantly or maybe just unknowingly living their life right now, playing the stock market or caring about how many people like their social media accounts or getting plastic surgery to look a certain way or filling their social calendar or dreaming about the boat that they want to get or dreaming about the South of France epic vacation that they're going to have with their friends and just living a very 3D reality and having no idea the depths of psychological warfare that is occurring in the collective right now. And I feel because of the nature of my work and how many people I do work with every single week, 
for over a decade and the amount of information that comes through my stream of consciousness while I work to guide and mentor people through their own intimate journeys. I gather so much information that I believe that is relevant for the collective. And there are so many times I do a session with people and I say, gosh, I wish I could, well, I do share it, but I, this needs to be shared um, because it's so relevant for so many people by the thousands. And so this is why I do these videos. I don't do them very often lately because I am very busy and I am prioritizing my own wellness and my family, actually. I have two preteens that are taking a very good percentage of my life and my attention right now, as they should, and I prioritize them first. Uh, and I am very present mom. I'm involved in every aspect of my children's lives. The good, the bad, everything. And very involved. And my son, even though he moved out, uh, my oldest, uh, you know, we still see him weekly and we do a lot of things together as a family. So it's pulled me away. So when I sit down and carve out time from being a family mom and taking care of myself and writing my book, working with my clients and planning Aramis creative learning classes and teaching I prioritize these videos by necessity. So I'm not one of those people that cares about likes. Don't really care if anybody watches them that has a bad attitude or isn't willing to take something from it. There's an energy exchange. I really do this for the people I know that are gonna be divinely guided to watch these videos that I create because they have a purpose, you know, like I'm doing it for a reason. I'm taking time out of my day to prioritize things when I feel like it gets to the extreme that it's necessary to have these conversations. So I might do a video once a month and I might do one every week. And there are times where I might be doing more. It's just dependent on, I get that tug, you know, in my heart. I just needs to be, just needs to take precedence. And today is one of those days. Um, so the war that we are experiencing, the reason it's different and the reason so many people are unaware of it and completely oblivious is because it is a war in the astral. It is a war on our consciousness and our consciousness cannot be seen or felt. It's not physical. It is part of our physical bodies. It is part of our makeup as who I am and who all of you are, but the consciousness resides outside of us. It connects to our soul and our divinity, and that is what they are trying to control. That is what they want. Who are they? The dark players. And as I've talked about them in several of my books and in different presentations and conferences that I've done, public speaking, it is a collection of the puppets, the puppeteers. So all the players that we see, that we know, that are famous, all the ones in the behind the scenes that we don't know and we will never see, because they're hidden on purpose. And in all of the interdimensional, extraterrestrial entities, demons, and all of the um, other players involved. So you collectively put all those together, and I call that the dark player, the dark players. So what's happening right now is we are at a, this is a dominant timeline. I've talked about this many times, many different ways. There are an infinite amount of realities, an infinite amount of lifetimes parallel to this one. In this reality, we so happen to have time, so it's perceived as past, present, and future. But in reality, all happening simultaneously at the same time. Some timelines are have less energy behind them, less influence on the other timelines. So they're not a dominant timeline. They exist, they are part of the whole, but they're a fraction of the whole. And then there are other timelines that hold great significance, great meaning, and um, can help to evolve or devolve humanity. So Lemuria, the period or era of Lemuria, dominant timeline. Atlantis, dominant timeline. This era of the Ascension, dominant timeline. So 
I talked about, and I did a video recently with Journey to Truth. It's also on my channel where I go into timeline convergence. And I'm not going to get into it too much today, but the purpose of that video was to relay a message that I've been receiving countless times over the last few years and really exponentially within the last few months where the other versions of ourselves and other timelines, regardless of who we were and what we were doing, that are connected to more dominant timelines. What happens here is affecting there and what's happening there is affecting here. We can only control what we are doing here because we're only conscious of what we're doing here. So how we handle this era, this, this life for ourselves, individually speaking, because it, really that's all we can control. Um, we can influence, which is the other part of it, but really we can only control what we do. Um, and and the energy that we put out and the contribution that we make. What happens here is significantly affecting, transmuting, influencing, and many different things someplace else. For, for example, what's happening right now is very clearly mimicking or mirroring a similar period in Atlantis, right before Atlantis fell apart, fell apart. Um, there was technology, power struggle, and a lot of the manipulation that's occurring right now. We are reliving that in a different way in a modern era, a different era. So how we respond to it here significantly affects what happens over there. So if we don't buy into the transhumanism movement, if we don't, if we keep in check the level at which we accept technology into our, our reality. How we allow our how we allow ourselves to lead and to follow. How we heal, how we don't heal, how we incorporate spirituality, how we don't. All of the facets of our reality connect to the all the facets of reality there. So if we make change here that's positive and we do something different, it can absolutely affect the outcome over, over there. So there are a large, keeping this example going, there are a large percentage of people that moved to Florida within the last five years, perceivably because of the climate of politics and you guys know the reasons. In actuality, a lot of the reasons people are being drawn here is because um, this land is connected to Atlantis. So those people that are here that have had past lives in Atlantis or are connected to Atlantis in some way are now overlapping with Atlantis in the other era to the point where you're on the same land, just different, different timelines that exist simultaneously on, on top of each other in the same space. Um, they're affecting each other. So a lot of people in Florida, the Bahamas, the Keys, Keys is the is Florida, but uh, certain aspects of Mexico and Central America and other places, even in Africa, all connected to Atlantis. And they're there here, they're here now in those places because they are there in that same place in a different era. So they're holding the space here, making changes, doing whatever it is that they're doing, influencing energetically by anchoring their physical body here, doing grid work, um, affecting positive change, living a different life here, making different choices here. So many different things. It's not just one, but nevertheless, it affects the other period. I hope this is making sense. What's my point? Timeline convergence is is a very real um, is very real right now because so much of what we're doing now and the choices that we make are affecting the past versions of ourselves in this timeline, in this uh, era, or this reality of perceived time. 
because this is a dominant timeline and it's such an anchor of a timeline because it's so significant because what we're doing now really does affect so many places so many times the war against us to keep us under control and to manipulate us is heightened and it's heightened now more than ever before because as we know the period during the pandemic didn't turn out the way that the dark players expected for many reasons so now we are at another important junction with the election period but what have they been doing since the pandemic period that didn't work out the way they did? And what have they been working towards for probably 20, 30 years that have all seemingly come into a pot of manipulation and convergence in their own way within this period that is working against us? And that's why this video is so important because I'm gonna talk about those things and what we can do about it. So this is very much a psychological war, psychological warfare. This is a war on our consciousness. So it's not going to be a physical war that we see in the textbooks and in, in our his story books of the wars where people are out there physically fighting. This is not a physical war, although there are physical elements. And yes, things that happen in the astral do affect us in the physical sense, but we are not physically fighting each other. This is a war on our consciousness. So we are being attacked consciously in so many ways that, that in the dark player's eyes, in their playbook, if we can be manipulated and attacked consciously to become more primal and to follow their agendas, we will lose our divinity and they will capture it in their in their mind. So when you're working in a psychological war, it works off of ego. So people who are very competitive and competitive isn't a bad thing. I don't mean to put people down that are competitive. Sometimes we need that drive for specific purposes. I'm talking hyper competition. You can't do anything. You can't even be happy for the person next to you because you feel jealousy. You can't stand the fact that someone else can do something better than you. That we're seeing this I see it all the time. People who do Reiki or energy readings or stuff that I do, and they don't like me because they think I'm a threat to them in some way because I might steal their clients. That's absolutely absurd. Um, because so many people bring value in different ways and we need more than one person. I hope people are seeing, talking more to more people than just me because other people will give you different pieces that I'm not going to give you on purpose, probably. You know, we... And we also learn things during the times that we need to, that's relevant for and conducive to our journey where we are in that moment. So a beautiful healer could help somebody two years down the line, they find someone else that helps them in the next level that they're ready for. And that's how you evolve. So you can't have just one healer, one psychic, one mentor, one teacher, one guide. We have many teachers, many masters. I don't like the word master, but many guides. But people who are very primal, um, they require validation constantly, continuously. That's why the social media um, element is so strong because people care so much. How many people are liking my posts? How many followers do I have? Um, they receive people res that are very much in the ego, receive validation from everywhere outside themselves. They never trust their self. They never trust how they feel. They need to know how everyone else feels. So if you are allowing yourself to operate in that way, then you are more likely to be manipulated by the dark player's agenda to work off the ego. Because then you don't trust yourself and you're competing with everyone. You look at everyone around you as a threat. Well, she's more pretty than me. She has bigger breasts than me. He's stronger than me. He has a nicer car than me. He makes more money than me. Whatever. I didn't mean to make those gender specific, but um, sometimes they are gender specific. <laughs> I can't say anything right these days. People get mad at you. I don't care. Um, so the woke agendas are is the big arena that they work through. So the woke agendas is just their playbook of, okay, what are all the things? What does that mean? The woke agenda is... What are all the things that we can implant into 
the collective to dishearten them, to divide them, to shake them up, to get them angry about something and to push them away from each other. All about division. So the biggest part of the woke agenda is first divide, divide, divide. How many different ways can we splice everybody up? How can we create division? Well, there is the war on gender, politics, sports, religion, what state you live in, what's the county? Some people are so like, oh, my county's better than yours. I hate you. Absolutely absurd. Um, gangs, anything and everything that causes division. You might think it's something very simple, like sports teams. But you can't, there are so many people that are so hyper fans that they will literally kill other people and get into fights at games because they believe wholeheartedly that their team is better. Why? They're all humans. They all work really hard. They all play really hard. They all train really hard. Why is it that one team is so much better than the other that we hate the other team? They put hate because it's not just about division. Then we got to hate the person because they're not the same religion. They're on a different sports team. They live in a different state. Men are better than women. Women are better than men. So all these agendas that they put out is creating division and hate. Then we start to fragment because now we're walking around hating everybody. We're competing. We're on edge. So now we have fragmented ourselves. Now we're really in the ego. And they implant further agendas. So now we are dismantling the family unit. I've been talking about this for so long. I have seen this coming. They want to dismantle the family unit. They want to pull families apart. They want to take our children from their families and say, your parents don't know anything. You can bypass them. There are laws that allow children to get changes, sex changes and get these things and without to buy and bypass their parents' um, permission. Your parents don't know anything, you know, and glamorizing divorce. Again, I'm not a bit against divorce. Divorce is there because sometimes things don't work out. It's fine. But when they glamorize it and they make movies about it and they make it so cool and now I think they've even moved past divorce. Now we've, we've already established that the, the, the newer generations don't value marriage anymore. Okay, they did. They won that in that way. And now it's, why well, get married at all? Or if you do, it doesn't really matter. You'll just, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And there's no value in the connection between one person. There's all this, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Uh, temptations. There's no core values. So now it's confusing everybody. You know, who, there's no core group. There's no family unit anymore that has been dismantled in many newer generations' eyes, unfortunately, with the TV shows and the movies, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it until that's just a, a new belief system of, well, it doesn't have to be that way. It could be this way. And once we separate and divide the family unit, now each one of those are susceptible and vulnerable to manipulation in their own way. Especially the, the teen and young adult group. Oh, you don't like the gender you are. You don't like being human. You're, vulner we, you're vulnerable and weak. So we're going to attack you in the sense where you don't know you're being attacked. You think that I'm your friend. And I'm saying, hey, why don't you? You could be anything you want to be. You could be a dinosaur. You could be a cat. Let's put litter boxes in the classroom and let children go to the bathroom in the classroom and lick their paws and speak in meows and make that part of mainstream as it's okay. And if you don't agree, something is wrong with you or obesity is cool. Not let's not talk about the fact that people are dying, getting diabetes, heart disease, and a million other things. We're, we're not going to talk about that, but it's okay to be overweight, extremely overweight. That's beautiful. And anybody that doesn't feel that way is fat shaming. That's absurd. First of all, if people are struggling with their weight, that's a different thing. And yes, everybody is beautiful wherever they are. If that's the best version of themselves that they can be, sure. 
You don't have to be thin to be beautiful. But when they, it's the extremes. Are you guys seeing? It's the extremes. They take one thing, they dismantle it, and then they push you in the extreme direction. That's the problem. That's the woke agenda is the extreme. They make everything to the extreme. It started with the gay movement. Then they added 17 other letters. Then they confused the population. And if we're not on board with it, if we, then we have a problem with it. And now they've divided us. <laughs> it's so clear to many of us, but there are so many oblivious and there are so many fragmented, beautiful souls, I feel for them, that were bullied, harmed, traumatized as a child. And they have become a furry now and they have found their furry friends and they feel whole again. It may not be real, it's illusionary, but to them it's real. So who are we to judge in that sense? But they don't realize they're being manipulated. And they're so afraid of losing their rights as being furries or the reptiles walking around fully tattooed with implants and their tongue slid. And obviously they don't realize that they are, they have a reptilian <laughs> implant uh, attachment. So that reptilian entity that's attached to them wants to look like itself. So it's convincing or taking over the body of that person and making them change themselves so that they look that they look like the entity. <laughs> I mean, there are so many things that are occurring right now. And ultimately, to take it back to the technology and Atlantis and the mirroring there, where we are with technology and where they where the dark players want to go with it is scary and it is a cycle that's re reoccurring which they are trying to push you know once they fragment everybody and we have the furries running around and the reptilian hybrid people and the different letter alphabet people and the non-binary and all of that that leads to okay, uh, now we're fully divided and we're separate from the rest of the society. So why would they not be willing to try microchips in the brain and transhumanism? Oh, that's cool too. I could look any way that I want to and I can look like my filter on Snapchat. I want to look like that. I don't like how I look. I want to be more beautiful. I want to accentuate my lips and my eyebrows, this and that. And I can do that if I am, if I plug in to some computer chip and go into this VR world. They don't realize the price that they're paying. They're selling their soul for it. And the mainstream media, it's almost like the mainstream media is the, is the project manager for the dark players to broadcast or to push through these agendas and narratives repetitively because we know that as hum human nature our minds our brains are designed through repetition so the more we see something the more we start to accept it to believe it so if we see these things repeated repeatedly people are more likely to consent to it on some level or be open to it and this escalated psychological warfare is at its peak right now and that's why I wanted to do this video, because I don't think I've said anything so far that isn't already known. But the reason I'm doing this today and the reason why this is so important is because they are the dark players and their psychological warfare. They are turning it up. They are escalating their game and they are doing everything they can to hijack the consciousness of those who are left or to put the nail in the coffin on those that they've already grasped, or the ones that they've already been taken, the ones that are perceivably NPCs because the soul of the person is back here and there's an entity driving the body and they're not even there anymore. Um, and many people, unfortunately, in their families have one, two, or a many who just have had 17 million of these and, and have hair signs in their yard. And, <sighs> and they're so misguided. This isn't a popularity contest on the first woman president. How cool and wouldn't it be fun versus angry man and <laughs> like 
that's just a facade. That's just the narrative they want us to see. So we don't go beyond that and see what's actually there and what's at stake. And whether people like Trump or not, it's what he stands for and what he re represents versus what Harris stands for, what she represents. I'm hesitating because I don't typically go into politics. That's not my thing. So I'm not telling anyone what to do. I'm just trying to, to help people see beyond what's actually happening right now. What's beyond the surface of what they are, the trickery, the illusion that they're trying to trick us with. So our bodies, why do we incarnate as a human? Why did so many of us volunteer? Because so many of us are struggling right now. So many of us are feeling alone. We've lost hope. We are suicidal. We are depressed. We are saying, I give up. I'm done. Nothing is working. That's where a lot of my clients are right now. They have there. Nothing is happening how they thought they would. Nothing is moving forward. It's just negative, negative, negative. And they're calling me and they're saying, I'm giving up. I'm losing hope. I'm drinking because I want to numb myself. My child is suicidal. I'm suicidal. That is a bad, but not a bad, that is a red flag. That shows me that the psychological warfare that they have amped up on some level is working. And I'm here to tell you that we can take power, our, our power back. We can take back in control. We have not lost. We are still winning, but they are going to do everything they can in the 11th hour. They're going to, they're going to put out everything they could possibly think of. Because if they can't get to our, if they can't get us to change sides, then they know that we're not part of Team Dark. They will do everything to make our lives miserable so that we give up. It's all about manipulation. They can't create, so how can they prevent us from creating? How can they prevent us from illuminating our light, broadcasting our light, being a positive influence? It's like our bodies are, our bodies are the antennas and our senses, our senses are picking up the signals that they're giving out good or bad. So if the dark players are putting out broadcast lower frequencies of disharmony, disruption, lack of hope, lack of desire, we've lost, we're doomed, all of these horrible things. Um, hurricanes are going to take, you know, Florida will be underwater. I mean, all the things, all the narratives that they're pushing. If our senses are tuned into that, because our body's the antenna, then we will absorb it, interpret it, and then we can co-create it. You know, they trick us to create what they can't create. So they put implant suggestions in our mind. We focus on it. We stir upon it. And then we end up inadvertently helping them to create it. So we can also tune our body with our frequency to allow our senses to tune into the higher frequencies, the higher realms. The problem is so much, so many of us, because of everything I've mentioned so far right now, have become dissociated. So the souls are somewhat pulling back, retracting back, because it's like, I don't like the feeling of this. I don't like this heightened sense of war. Everybody around me is agitated whenever I can't even go outside of my home because everybody is, and the energy people are giving off is negative and dense and horrific. Um, so their soul is like, I I don't like this, so I'm going to dissociate. So, so many starseeds are dissociated right now because we're tired of being attacked. We're tired of feeling helpless, tired of feeling like nothing is occurring. But it is. <laughs> but it, there's so much being thrown at us so that we don't see it. You know, they're like, oh, if we throw the hurricanes and tornadoes and all these horrible events um, the flooding in North Carolina, I mean, all of the things, if they could have us focus on, oh my God, things are so bad. Things are so bad. Things are so bad. Oh my gosh, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. Oh, what what if this, all of these, then our thoughts are bombarded with negativity and now our senses are going to tune in, hyper tune in 
to all of their negative agendas that are being broadcasted on top of that. And now our bodies, the, antenna, the antennas of our bodies are being used against us. That's psychological warfare because now we interpret it in our mind and we create it. So how do we call back on our soul? The, the whole point of this conversation today is people need to be aware of this. And for those of you that are competitive people, I am not, could care less if I win. I'm the worst person to play a game with. My family is super annoyed with me. Don't care about it. <laughs> I like to have fun, uh, but I don't care if I win. I have probably the least ego of anyone you've ever met. People who know me in the in real life know that about me. So a lot of this stuff doesn't work on me. I don't care about money. Don't care about fame. Don't care about likes. I care about the, what you know what I care about? The emails, the abundance of emails that I get text messages, calls, comments on my page of people saying, you have changed my life. Thank you so much. You're the only person that uplifts, enlightens me. And when I get read, um, feedback from the soul readings that I do, where people say, you have no idea how much you affected and changed my life. The abundance of those types of messages that I get fills me with so much gratitude and appreciation of the work that I do that that's what fuels me and motivates me to keep going. All the other stuff is just 3D fluff, you know? Who don't who knows if the number of people that the subscribers people have is even accurate. Some people pay for that stuff. So you see somebody with hundreds of thousands of followers. Is that even real? We don't know. Um, so it's the, how do you affect people's lives? Have you touched people in a way that has helped them? That's the name of the game. That's how you help people connect to their divinity. So instead of division, we come together. So let's do the opposite of everything that they're trying to push. Forgiveness is huge. Coming together is huge as a community and stop fighting with each other. Um, and well, my point about com com uh, competition if you are a competitive person in any way, use the competitiveness to fuel the fire within you to say, oh, I'm not going to let them win. Treat this as a game, the Ascension game. I will. I am pissed off that the dark players are manipulating me and taking, me, taking advantage of me. So I'm going to use all the competitiveness that I have in my soul. And I'm going to project that out. And I'm going to, I'm going to win. I'm going to win by bringing my divinity back by reclaiming my divinity by not buying into the agendas by not participating in the agendas by not co-creating the dark agendas that they are projecting upon us not believing the news and the mainstream narratives not following everything that you're told um, to believe and thinking for yourself and ultimately what we will do is we will start to receive the most validation from ourself. I care what I think about myself. I care how I feel, not because I'm selfish, but because I receive validation from within. And we are not taught to do that. And it took me a long time to learn that. Trust me, I went through half of my life where I was, people thought I was the meanest person. They, I wasn't even approachable. I was the one that wore all black, raced cars, wanted to fight people and had that look on my face that it was like, try me, you know, don't even come to me. I was not the nicest person. Um, so it's taken me a long time to get to where I am now. And I still have moments where I revert back to that, where I get so upset or I'm so betrayed by somebody or I don't learn a lesson. And, and I just, I'm like, oh my God, sometimes I want to be that old version of me so I can just, you know, get them back, whatever. But then I, re I realized immediately, um, no, I've evolved from that. That's 3D. That's a 3D game. So what we can do right now is call our soul back in and compete in the sense that we are going to reclaim our, our divinity and work for the light and be part of projecting the new earth, feeling gratitude, projecting what we want, not getting in the division, staying ne neutral, like choosing a side. Are you on the side of divinity of consciousness and the liberation of, of humankind? 
or are you on the transhumanism, full control, dark players side? So choose one or the other, of course. But then the way we get ahead is that we don't allow our emotions to get the best of us. Our emotions is what they use to drive us in whatever direction they want. They know that. So they can push us into rage, fear, sadness, or even lack of self-confidence, lack of self-worth, like all of those. They'll use that against us and push us where they need us to go. So if we can learn to bring ourselves to a place of neutrality where we're not triggered and we have the emotions, we allow the emotions to come through, of course, but then we recognize it and say, oh, why am I feeling fearful? Let me release the fear and take steps to learn the lesson that I need to learn from this fear. And through that process, we will be less, we will become less dissociated. Our souls will come back through. We will stand strong. We will stand firm. And we can stand our ground because we still have some time to go to get through uh, this astral war that's occurring. You know, and a lot of us are being pulled and doing a lot of work in the astral. And so, like I said, this war is less physical. A lot of us, most of us, the light body, the astral aspect of us is working tirelessly all the time in our dream state, do, do, do it while we sleep, um, in the moments where we are present but not present because there's an aspect of us someplace else fighting the spiritual war, rescuing souls from the void. So many different things we're doing. So that makes us feel really tired. And that can also dissociate us because we're tired. We feel drained. We feel fatigued. We feel like, uh, we're, it's, it's, we're struggling right now. A lot of us, but we need to know why we're struggling and how we can navigate it. That's the most important thing so that we put ourselves in a place of power as opposed to vulnerability. Why am I feeling so drained? Oh, okay, I'm doing a lot of work in the astral. So what can I do in my awake time to nourish my body? Go out in the sun, go to the ocean, walk on the beach, go in the, um, the desert, sacred sites, whatever, whatever you have near you, whether you're in the desert, the mountains, beach, wherever it is, go out in nature laugh, have fun. Um, don't be so serious. Allow yourself to have fun. Like my family and I, that's one of our favorite things. We put on funny cat videos and animal videos and we laugh, like belly laugh, like we're children, like we're crying. We're laughing so hard. We play silly video games. We have, we play, we've been playing a lot of Mario Kart, like old school Mario, Super Mario Brothers. I mean, it's silly. It's a silly video game, but it brings us all together. We laugh, we have fun. Be with your, so spend time with your families. If you're on good terms with them. <laughs> um, if you don't have a family, spend time with your pets. If you don't have pets and you're allergic, take the time when you're alone to bring balance, calm, and inner standing and surrender to your knowing that I must be alone for a reason. I must not be around other people for a reason. I must be preserving my energy and my frequency for a reason. I must not want to go out of the home for a reason. And this is anybody, whether you have pets or not. If you're not feeling called to go out, don't go out. Perhaps the outside reality is too, is not conducive and in resonance because it is so disconcerted. You need to preserve. So follow your gut, knowing of what you should do and what you shouldn't do right now. And if you can't bear to go to the grocery store, don't do it. Maybe have them delivered. Um, if you've created a sanctuary in your home and that's the only place you feel safe, well, maybe that's where you need to be a majority of the time and you limit your social interaction, things like that. Everybody's different right now. Then others are feeling called to go out and spread joy and laughter and talk to people at the store. That's fine too. So whatever it is that you feel is necessary or what you can handle. Don't compare yourself to anybody else because everybody else is in their own frequency, doing their own thing for their own reasons. So we have to remove judgment and expectation. One of my biggest pet peeves is when people judge other people in the sense of, I would do it this way. If it were me, I would do this. Well, it's not you. And you're not doing that. So 
it doesn't really matter. <laughs> like, and nobody really knows what they would do until they're actually in that situation. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a situation where I thought I would do something else and then I was in it and I did the complete opposite. So it's really easy to be spectators of other people's lives and, and judge and say, well, I would have done this, especially with our children. Do not coach your children or do not try not to have expectations of what your children should do based on what you would do. They are different people. They have different thoughts. They have different journeys. They have different wisdom. They have different reason for being here. Let them be their own people. Let your husband or wife be their own person. And just accept people for who they are as best as we can. And if they are truly not in alignment with your resonance and your highest good, then we have to have boundaries. And we have to have that difficult choice of, can I have them in my life? And if I can, I can't, what are the boundaries? What are we not allowed to talk about? Because we cannot take on the responsibility nor the burden of the ascension of those around us. We just can't. It doesn't even matter if it's your child or your spouse or your parent. It's a hard pill to swallow, but I'm telling you, people have reasons for doing what they're doing. And sometimes it looks like they're going down the wrong path, but we don't know if they're going down the wrong path because they are supposed to go down the wrong path because they're learning something from it. They are helping other people or they're going to use that experience later in a more powerful way. So we have to stay out of it. So what we do is we just provide the space of unconditional support and love when applicable. And if it's a toxic situation, we retract and we separate. So there isn't one recipe for everybody. We don't give people passes to walk all over us either as empaths. Um, we have to have strict boundaries and parameters set so that we don't take all of that in. I could talk for hours, so I'm, I don't want to keep going. But the last thing I want to say is one of the things that I've been coaching my clients on right now, a nice neat little trick that you can do to check in with yourself every day. On top of the other things that I've coached, mindful breathing, intention, visualization, grounding, all of those things are great. But what, because of everything I've just mentioned today, what is one way that we can call ourselves into this timeline and bring us into the present moment? Because many of us are not living in the present. We're so worried about the past. We're so worried about the future. We're so pulled by other timelines that we don't even know what reality we're in. What dimension are we in? It's like we forgot. It's not even about what day. It, people don't know what day it is anymore. It's like, what reality am I? Where are, where am I? All of that can be very overwhelming. The more multidimensional we are, the more heightened our senses are, the more we can tap into, the more we tune into, but then we forget where we are. And that can be a whole other issue. So what we can do to bring ourselves to the present moment and to help us feel grounded and connected to this body this space, this timeline, in the present, I'm talking right now, is to stand outside, or you could do this as soon as you get out of bed in the morning in your bedroom, doesn't really matter. But I mean, of course, in nature is always better. Stand with two feet on the ground, arms to the side, and look down and just take a moment, breathe, relax yourself, and look down at your feet. And take a moment just to... to Look at your feet and don't look at your unmanicured toes or like, that's not the game. We're just looking at our feet in this body, in this now moment. And we just look down, look down at your knees, look down at your legs, look at your arms, your hands, and just start to look at yourself. Not in the mirror. I'm talking, look down at yourself and just call your soul in to this present moment and say, I bring myself fully and completely into this present moment and feel yourself connecting to those feet, to those hands. And just look at yourself and feel yourself fully embracing and, and embodying this body that you're in, this vessel that you've chosen in this life. You need to be here. Many of us are floating around like a balloon on a string above and we need to pull ourselves back in, bring ourselves, anchor us, our, ourselves back into the present moment and Appreciate the present moment. Sit in the present moment. Allow the emotions to come with that present moment. 
and surrender to that which you cannot control. And then visualize your body just turning into this beautiful, or not turning into, but within your body is this golden column of light. That is your soul, your light, not someone else's. You're not calling on anything that's not already yours. Just visualize, just like your spine and, and like just this nice thick column of light coming in the center of your body, coming out in between your legs, down in between your feet. So you're now you're in the sturdy column of the most illuminated golden light that there is holding you together, holding you strong, giving you foundation, giving you stability, which will then empower you, which will raise your frequency that so that your body as that antenna will tune into the higher frequencies, the higher realms, the higher knowings, the intuition, the imagination, the trust will carry you above the density of the 3D and stand within that power and that knowing and, and create affirmations, you know, um, that I attract only the most highest frequency experiences, people, relationships, and abundance into my life that is in a complete alignment with my highest good. And so it is. And you just do that exercise daily, twice a day, five times a day if you need to, to remind you of where you are, to pull yourself back into the present moment. And it'll pull you right back in and then you'll feel assertive, you'll feel strong and empowered. And then when you move forward throughout the day, the choices that you make will align with that resonance of every decision I make, every move I make, everything I do will be, is in resonance, not will be, but is in resonance with my highest good. And if we all practice that collectively, repeatedly as part of our routine every day, we will be able to navigate through the next few months with grace because that's important. And I'm not talking about beautiful. I'm talking about just dignity. Let's not lose our dignity. Um, one of the biggest lessons I'm trying to teach my daughter right now is not caring about what other people think, but also the very real boundary or line that is after that of being an awful person and being arrogant and self-centered and we don't want that <laughs> you want to not care what other people think in the sense that you don't care who validates you you're validated by your own choices and your own internal knowing but at the same time you care about your contribution to the collective, how you are being perceived by the best, how you are operating as the best version of yourself. So how you are contributing to the collective, how you are presenting yourself to the world around you. Are you contributing positively by your attitude, your demeanor, your integrity, while still exercising boundaries and your ability to maintain sense of self direction and not being taken advantage of. You see there's a fine line and a delicate balance of not caring what other people think, but not having that it gaff moment where you don't care about anything you do and how it offends people because the world revolves around you. We don't want that. Um, and it's a, it's a delicate dance. It takes practice, but that's where we should strive to be. So we have that dignity and we have that grace while not caring what other people think, but also caring about our contribution to the collective and what we are putting out there with our words, our thoughts, our energy, everything combined. I don't know what else I was going to say. So I think that that's probably um, ideal to stop at this point. Um, hopefully this has been valuable and helpful. This is really important. And I hope that I relayed it in the way that I intended. And if you can, if you feel this resonates, share this message wide and far, um, because I think we need direction right now and we need a positive influence and a way to navigate through 
things that are coming, things that are occurring, and how to heal from things from the past, calling ourselves in, and really knowing all the parts and the convoluted nature of this reality and what is being thrown at us, things that we can see and things that we can't even see. We don't even fathom. We don't even know. So no one out there knows everything, even if they act like they do. I'm telling you, when we think we know something, it's like a video game. Another world opens up that contradicts with what we just learned. And we're like, what the, like, how does that even make sense? It doesn't. <laughs> so get used to things not making sense and just being living in the present moment and navigating things as they come. And that's the best that we can do. So I hope that this video has found all of you well. Leave messages, comments, let me know um, how you guys feel and um, how we can help each other and support each other through the next uh, this next phase. Until next time, see you guys soon, bye.